there's really two main reasons why people will choose to integrate SearchSpring on their category or collection page after they've already integrated us with Search. And the two main reasons for that, I would say the biggest driver behind that is definitely merchandising. Um, the reason being is that you can actually apply the global merchandising campaign that you've already curated to include all of your rules and business logic that you'd like to take advantage of for search that can all apply by default to any category or collection pages. Now, it also allows you to use the same merchandising drag and drop capabilities and boost rules for specific categories or collections that you've grown to know and love with search results. So a couple of things here are if you wanted to merchandise your beanies and hats collection, for example, you could come in here. You can see that all of these products have been reordered to help White and Warren specifically merchandise for this particular collection. They're also able to use boost rules specifically for particular collections. So, for example, if you have a new arrivals page or a bestsellers page, you might want to prioritize your new arrivals. Obviously, on that new arrivals page, you can do that through a set of boost rules so that that page dynamically updates as we receive updated product data. Same thing for the bestsellers, except you'll swap out the newest component for best selling and we'll actually dynamically update that page as well as we get updated sales data from you. So it really takes a heavy hand out of the manual piece of merchandising and allows the system to prioritize what's important to you from a product perspective without you having to come in and monitor it at all times. So not only can you take advantage of the global merchandising rule that you have set up, but you can also individually prioritize for those specific categories or collections that might have slightly different needs than what is set up within the global merchandising campaign. Now, I'd say the other main reason is due to the way that data is structured and our ability to dissect that data and use it for filters on the site. So a lot of native platforms will struggle with, um, especially Shopify will struggle with the lack of a category hierarchy. So in that case, we're actually able to use fields that are passed to us to essentially create that as a filter for clients. We're also able to extract values from tags in order to separate out all of that tag data into individual filters that are shown on the site. So say, for example, you wanted to show a color filter and you also wanted to show a sleeve length filter and you also wanted to show a neckline filter, but all of those data points were found within tags we're able to actually extract all of those out and make three individual filters so that people can narrow down to specifically what they're looking for. Once you have all of that data already set up for search, it's really easy to go ahead and transfer that over to category pages. So within search customizations here, there is a faceting option. So any of the filters that are already set up here and are used for search will automatically carry over to the category or collection pages as well. All of these can be changed and edited based on what you'd like to prioritize your shoppers to be able to narrow down their results set by. And then you're also able to manually control those on a per collection or per category basis. So if you come into merchandising and you have a merchandising campaign created, you're actually able to control and say, I actually want to use a custom filter order here and I want to prioritize size or color instead of category. And I actually want to hide category entirely. So you'll have the ability to have full control over not only how the products appear, but also how those filters that give people the ability to narrow down that result set are displayed as well.